Hello, I'm Krista Sawyers, and I'm thrilled for you to be joining me today. Welcome to my virtual CSA Day presentation on my honors thesis entitled Anxiety Mindsets and Academic Achievement in College Students. <clears throat> today, college students are experiencing increasing amounts of anxiety. Both Brofferts and colleagues in 2018 and Eisenberg and colleagues in 2009 concluded that the presence of anxiety or depression within college students was cor correlated with a decrease in GPA. Although a strong negative correlation exists between mental health and grades within college students, there is little known regarding the potential nuances to this relationship. One potential moderator in this relationship is the way students think about anxiety, specifically whether they use a fixed or growth mindset. In 1988, Weck and Leggett identified the difference between fixed and growth mindsets after exploring the relationship between implicit theories and failures within academics. Failure defines individuals with fixed mindsets who have a challenging time looking past those failures, feel trapped in each setback, and defensively blame others for their inadequacies. Instead of viewing setbacks as failures, Individuals with a growth mindset, with growth mindsets, use setbacks as learning opportunities to improve, view feedback as useful, and exude effort to improve and grow their skills. In 2016, Schroeder and colleagues determined that mindsets are domain and content specific, including anxiety and depression. Individuals with a fixed anxiety mindset believe there is not a lot that they can do to control their anxiety because their anxiety is something that they are born with. These individuals believe they can't change or decrease their anxiety as well as have the power to control what evokes their anxiety. Individuals with a growth anxiety mindset develop strategies to manage their anxiety and have more control over their anxiety. In 2015, Schroeder and colleagues concluded that individuals with growth anxiety mindsets reported fewer mental health symptoms. In 2017, Schroeder's team discovered that undergraduates who had experienced more stressful life events displayed a stronger fixed anxiety mindset. In addition, the growth anxiety mindset has been identified as a protective factor against stressful life events by increasing an individual's chances of coping more proactively with psychological distress and stressful life events. The purpose of the present study was to gain a better understanding of how anxiety mindsets can affect end of semester grades in college students. The current study explored the relationship between stress and end of semester grades as potentially influenced by growth and fixed anxiety mindsets. Specifically, it was hypothesized that high stress in those with fixed anxiety mindsets would have a greater detrimental impact on grades than in those with growth anxiety mindsets. There was a total of 109 undergraduate female students between 18 and 35 years of age. All participants were female because they were recruited from five different psychology classes at a small women's private college. Participation was voluntary, confidential, and participants were treated in accordance with the ethical principles of psychologists and code of conduct faced by the American Psychological Association. Additionally, the participants received no monetary compensation. After giving informed consent, participants completed a paper survey and gave permission for the college registrar to release in a semester grades to the researcher. The survey consisted of four parts. First, the strength of each participant's anxiety mindset was identified through a four item survey entitled the Mindset Scale. The Mindset Scale was adapted from the Implicit Theories of Anxiety Scale, which was developed by Schroeder and colleagues in 2015. Participants were asked to indicate the level of agreement to each anxiety-related statement using a Likert scale. One equaled strongly disagree, and six equaled strongly agree. Next, 
participants rank order the current classes from least to most challenging. To determine if there is a difference in mindset between the least and most challenging courses. Third, current stress level was assessed using an adapted perceived stress scale, which queried stressful feelings experienced within the last month. The scale was developed by Cohen and colleagues in 1983. The final portion of the survey measured semester stress using a shortened version of the college undergraduate stress scale that we, that was used to determine the number of stressful life events experienced in the last semester. The scale was developed by Brenner and Mackin in 1998. At the end of the semester, the registrar reported the individual course grades for each participant and the overall end of semester grade point average. As I start to move into the descriptive results, I wanted to highlight that the majority of participants had a growth anxiety mindset compared to a fixed anxiety mindset. As you can see from the pie chart, 61.5% of participants had a growth anxiety mindset, whereas 38.5% had a fixed anxiety mindset. As expected, there was a significant association between mindsets and current stress. This was made evident through the chi-square test that were conducted when chi-square equaled 21.17 with a p-value less than 0.01. This means that individuals with a fixed anxiety mindset were more likely to indicate experiencing high stress and the individuals with a growth anxiety mindset were more likely to indicate experiencing low stress. Additionally, the majority of participants indicated that they were experiencing moderate to high stress. 64% of participants experienced moderate stress, 24.8% experienced high stress, and 11% experienced low stress. The mean classification of current stress was 2.14, with a standard deviation equaling 0.59, and a range between 1 and 3, indicating moderate stress. Ultimately, the mean total score of current stress was 21.60, with a standard deviation equaling 6.34, and a range between 9 and 34. As you can see from the bar graph, the top three stressors participants experienced were a lack of sleep, writing a major term paper, and getting sick. 72.5 of the participants experienced getting sick. 76.1% wrote a major term paper, and 89.9% experienced a lack of sleep. The average number of stressful semester events per participant was 9.25, with a standard deviation of 3.14, and a range between 2 and 16 events. The average end of semester GPA was a B, which equated to a GPA equaling 3.35. The standard deviation equaled 0 0.65, with a range between 1.33 and 4. A GPA equaling a 4 equates to an A, whereas a GPA equaling 0 equates to an F. The average grade in hardest class was a high C, which equated to a GPA equaling 2.97. The standard deviation equaled 1.07 with a range between 0 and 4. As seen in this table, GPA, current stress, and mindset were significantly related to one another, indicating that a moderation analysis was appropriate to conduct. I wanted to point out here that there is a statistically significant negative relationships between total current stress and overall semester GPA and total current stress in grade and hardest class. In response, a simple linear regression was calculated to predict GPA based on current stress. As you can see in this table, a significant regression equation was found. 
This means current stress has an effect on predicting GPA. R squared equaled 0 0.06, indicating this model accounts for 6% of the variance. Current stress is a significant and negative predictor of GPA, indicating that higher stress was related to lower GPA. This regression confirmed that the statistically significant negative correlations between total current stress and overall semester GPA, as well as total current stress and hardest class GPA. With the addition of anxiety mindsets in the second step, current stress was no longer a statistically significant predictor, indicating that anxiety mindsets did not moderate the effect of current stress on GPA. To further investigate, independent samples t-test were conducted to compare grade and hardest class between students with fixed and growth and anxiety mindsets and overall semester GPA for students with fixed and growth anxiety mindsets. There was a significant difference in the grade and hardest class for students with a fixed anxiety mindset as seen in the bottom green bar, equaling a mean of 2.70 with a standard deviation of 1.24, and a growth anxiety mindset, as seen in the top green bar, equaling a mean of 3.13 with a standard deviation of 0 0.92. The t-value equaled 1.92 with a statistically significant p-value equaling less than 0 0.03. Likewise, there is a significant difference in GPA between students with fixed anxiety mindset, as seen in the bottom blue bar equaling a mean of 3.20, with a standard deviation of 0 0.79, and a growth anxiety mindset, as seen in the top blue bar equaling a mean of 3.44, with a standard deviation of 0 0.56. The t-value equaled 1.77, and it was, had a statistically significant p-value that was less than 0 0.01. So the main takeaway points include that anxiety and stress do impact grades. The results do, in fact, confirm the previous findings establishing a relationship between stress and grades. Likewise, Current stress predict the GPA. There is also a significant association between current stress and mindsets. When individuals have a fixed anxiety mindset, both GPA and their hardest ranked class and overall GPA are lower. And although differences in overall GPA in grade and hardest class were found between those with growth anxiety mindsets and those with fixed anxiety mindsets, mindsets did not moderate the relationship between current stress and in the semester GPA. So conclusively, GPA and grade and hardest class did not correlate with the total score on the semester stress scale, possibly resulting from a reduction in the sensitivity of the instrument due to the adaptation for this study. The Departmental Review Board required the omission of certain life events that they deemed too sensitive for student research, such as being raped, being accused of rage, rape, and finding out you are HIV positive. The current iteration consisted of a 28 item measure, or 28 stressful events that are adapted from the original 51 item measure developed by Renner and Mackin in 1998. Using the full 51 item measure may have resulted in a more thorough assessment of the relationships between stress, mindsets, and GPA. Other limitations included a small sample size and that grades were collected from only one semester. Future research should focus on increasing the sample size, making use of the entire college undergraduate stress scale, and vary the time of semester participants' anxiety is tested. Continued research in this area is important because learning how to better help students cope with anxiety and stress is very important. Ultimately, 
Changing the way individuals think about anxiety could result in academic benefits for years to come. I just wanted to say a special thank you to Dr. Morris and Dr. Pravat. Thank you for being the most wonderful thesis advisors, always being so encouraging and pushing me to do my very best. I also wanted to give a shout out to the psychology department at Meredith College, the CSA Day Committee, and the URAC Committee. I hope you all have enjoyed my presentation and got something out of it, especially if you are a college student, to know that you are not alone. Um, and if there are any questions, please don't hesitate to reach out to me with my Meredith email. All right, thank you so much. Bye.